I am going to. Thank you, whoever did that for us. Uh, going to attempt again to share our screen. Um, share. Uh, we wanted to start our meeting with our land acknowledgement. If you can see this, we're, we've spent some time thinking about this and we're still processing it. We consider this to be an ongoing process for us and hopefully for you too. But here is our uh, acknowledgement of the moment. The New Mexico Alliance of Health Councils humbly recognizes and acknowledges that we are on unceded territory and ancestral lands of the original peoples of New Mexico's Pueblos Apache Nations and the Navajo Nation. Together, we acknowledge the history of genocide, dispossession, colonization, and ongoing systemic inequities, while strengthening and respecting relationships with Indigenous people. We give thanks to the past, present, and future stewards of this land and respect all tribal nations' sovereignty. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous resiliency, self-determination, and self-governance of New Mexico's tribes and nations who are still here today. And I wanna add that those of us who are newcomers to this land, we're also striving to be good allies with those land protectors as we move forward. Um, so that is our land acknowledgement. And uh, whoops. Back again, let me stop sharing. So today we have two presenters. First, we're gonna have Dom Capello. Dom, are you here by yourself? I don't see Catherine. I'm representing Dom? the Anna Age Aid Institute on Good Friday. On Good Friday, thank you so much. Dom is one of the people who is taking a, a time from his holiday to present to us. So Dom and his uh, co-founder, Catherine, are the uh, originators, founders of the Anna Age 8 Institute, which feels the 100% community program. And Dom, I am going to turn it over to you. All right, well, thank you for having me. I'm Dominic Capello. And as Wendy said, I'm the co-director of the Anna Age 8 Institute. We are part of New Mexico State University Cooperative Extension, which means that um, we have partners, uh, staff, and offices in every county in the state. And um, our mission is very simple in that we want to ensure that every county has 10 vital services for every child and family. It's pretty, it's as simple as that, really. We just want every single child to grow up trauma-free. And uh, that means working together uh, county by county. Our initiative, which is called 100% New Mexico, is um, a process where we are invited by county stakeholders to come in and to mobilize. And there's an entire process that we go through and, um, we uh, are looking at what's called adverse childhood experiences, which are 10 forms of adversity, abuse and neglect that I believe, gosh, at least I think about 65% of New Mexicans, they all have one adverse childhood experience, but uh, about one in four have four adverse childhood experiences, which are emotional abuse, physical abuse, Parents are separated and divorced or divorced and um, living in households where an adult has substance use disorders. So uh, there's a lot to talk about and we offer lots of workshops. We offer power hours and webinars. And really, if you look in the chat, you'll see our website and that can direct you to everything we do. And also I put in a link. So if you want to download the two books that are guiding our initiative, our first book was called Anna Age 8. And that focused on the story of eight-year-old Anna. She is a fictional character based on a very real case within child welfare. Uh, my co-partner in this project and with my books is Dr. Catherine Ortega Courtney. And she and I met two levels down under the ground in a basement in Santa Fe at CYFD. And we worked there in the uh, Research Assessment and Data Bureau. 
uh, we met 10 years ago and we were at the epicenter of um, every horrible thing happening to our kids and families. We were collecting data county by county um, on uh, suspected abuse, substantiated abuse and everything that goes on within the child welfare system. So we had a pretty good view on what was going on. And I could talk for a long, long time, but I don't think I wanna do that. I think a lot of you um, are aware of our initiative. My favorite story is um, that we have kind of a, a, a way of working and, and how we get set up and it's on our website. It, there are guidelines, there are no rules, but guidelines. And we say, you know, contact us if you want to, if you're interested in the initiative. But my favorite story is that we got an email from Valencia County Health Council. And they let us know that they had already read as a group, Anna Age 8. Then they had already read 100% Community, which is the blueprint for the initiative. And they were ready to do the initiative. And we had not been talking with them at all about any of this. They'd done this all pretty much all on their own. And they're the only county that just decided as a health council, this is interesting. We're going to explore it. We're going to discuss it. We're going to vote on it. And um, Dana Good is here. She she can she could correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong, but I think that's basically Yeah, you got it really wrong. You came and launched with us like four years ago. <laughs> well, no, we did we did we did a very little, we came down and we did a little book club, and we had went and gone around the state and did little book clubs. But after that, it wasn't like we knew all of this was going on. It was my my point is that you're the only county that really took charge to kind of, you just got on it. You just kind of were diligently moving through the process. We weren't having like weekly updates on how do we do it and what do we do? You, you folks knew what to do. So I mean, this as a compliment. Um, and uh, for us, it was incredible to have the health council embrace this and make this one of their key programming. And so um, that's my favorite health council story and I'm sticking with it. Um, but uh, I don't know, Dan, should we add anything else to that story outside of the fact that we did come down a few years earlier and did a little, I think it was really a very brief little book club where we talked a little bit about, about Anna and then we left. That's great. <laughs> well, um, I, I see all the links in the chat too. And so that's great that there's, it, and it's a really well-designed, really informative website. So if anyone wants more information, I know that um, Dom is so available to reach out and respond to um, questions, or if it's something that you wanna start in your health council, or you have community members who wanna be a part that um, might even wanna take the lead. It doesn't have to be just one way. Um, it just fits the community. So thank you so much, Dom. Oops, we got a frozen screen there. Wait, am I frozen? Yeah, yeah you, you are. Uh, do we have any other questions for Dom at the moment? As Sharon said, the links are in the, uh, in the chat. We'll also be sending this information out after this meeting. So we want to be sure that you know how to get in touch with this particular program this, um, that's working with our children and families all across the state. Let's see, we have a new message in chat. Let me make sure. Frozen, but available. Okay, frozen, but available. So if anyone has any questions, I'm not seeing anything in chat at the moment. Well, oh, Wendy, I have a quick question for Dom. Sure. Mm -hmm. I know he mentioned the initiatives happening at the county level, but I'm curious. Um, I think Sharon had may have mentioned that this initiative was starting in Aname, Pueblo. So just curious to hear if that if uh, what what other tribal communities are part of the hundred percent program. All right. Well, this leads me to my second favorite one hundred percent story, and hopefully I won't freeze. Let me know if I'm freezing up in the chat. Um, so about two years ago, we got a call from Taos Pueblo and they came to visit us and wanted to talk about the book Anna Age 8. And so we met and then they took, we gave them, I think about 12 books and they went back to the Pueblo and they, they formed a book club and they all read Anna Age 8 together. And then they invited us in, Catherine and myself were invited at the end to debrief the experience. 
And then they said, okay, now we're going to read 100% community. So they went through that. And then they invited us in at the end to debrief. And what they said was, uh, well, we have kept this internal to the Pueblo, but our, we, we need these 10 vital services for surviving and thriving. And many of those are provided by the county and the city. So the Pueblo needs to go out and invite stakeholders in. And so they formed three 100% community book clubs. We've actually never had so many book clubs ever in the history of our initiative going on at the same time. So that's a story about how a Pueblo starts the initiative, takes the lead in a county. Now to get to your question, so we are county based. Uh, we have a lot of reasons for that, that we talk about in the book. Um, but I think that um, we do have the beginnings of a project in Rio Riba, we have the beginnings of a project in Santa Fe. And so I know there has been outreach uh, to Nambe. I'm not exactly sure um, exactly what's going on there, but I, I know both, both our people in Santa Fe and in Rio Riba have relationships <laughs> with people in Nambe. So I think I don't have all the answers, but gosh, we should probably be in touch and talk a little bit about that. And then I can I can find out more, but I know there's interest and we're just trying to figure out how to get those two counties together. I should also mention that we um, are, are beginning, we were beginning to create five regions. Um, we have 15 counties engaged in this process right now at various stages of development with 100%. So we were given money from the state in the last legislative session so that we can have five regional managers. Now these managers will mirror the managers in the, the Department of Health. So we'll have alignment with the Department of Health. And of course that means alignment with the health councils because of your strong relationship with DOH. And we're very much in, aligned with Sharon Finarelli. So we're, 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 we're just trying to get in alignment with everybody and supporting everybody because we all pretty much have the same goal of health equity and making sure that everyone has the resources, especially since all the disruptions to our jobs, to our healthcare, to social services, um, to schools uh, since the pandemic. So there's a lot of work to do. And I think, um, I guess I could say in conclusion, though I'm absolutely available and Sharon and Diana can get you to me anytime you want and so can Wendy. Um, but we start our process with a survey of the county. And so those might be very interesting to you. We ask parents and youth and now elders, to what degree do you have access to 10 vital services? And it's not a good story. It's not good. 50% of people looking for behavioral health care can't get to it. 30% who want medical care in a pandemic can't get to it. So it's a long list of vital services that our families cannot easily access. So that's the challenge. The good news is we have the framework to fix that, but it's gonna require all of us coming together as one united voice to uh, make sure that that happens. But I'm thrilled to be here and I'm a resource. I should mention that United Way, oh, I see that I was gonna mention this, it's actually in the chat. United Way of Curry and Roosevelt County are the sponsors of, oh, there are hybrid, they're our only model that is a two county model. So we have to always call them 100% Curry and Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. um, but we're very open to exper experimentation. There are no set rules within this initiative, lots of guidelines, but we love to experiment. So if you feel like, well, we wanna do a smaller group or something big or something all connected, just reach out to me. I'm ab As Sharon said, I think I'm pretty available and I'm thrilled to talk to anybody about how we support your goals um, in making sure that everyone in New Mexico can thrive. That's what we're about. So I, I think that's it. Uh, Great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Dom. That was terrific. And indeed, we all want to work together. It's not enough, but people will be getting in touch with you. I am quite sure. So thank you. And I appreciate that call to let's all work together. There's just so much that we need to do and we can't do it alone. So I want to move on to our next set of uh, presenters, something very different. Avi, I may not be saying your name correctly, but Avi Golden and Dr. Caitlin Brooks are going to lead us into an exploration of aphasia, much in the news these days. And what is it? And uh, more specifically, what are some strategies that we can use to effectively communicate uh, with people who have aphasia? So I'm going to turn it over to Avi and uh, Doc, the doctor, the good doctor, 
I'm not sure which order you want to go in. Why don't you take it away, though? All right. Thank you for having us here today. Avi and I um, are, are very excited to have this talk, especially because we've been doing this kind of work for many years. But as of the past couple of weeks, you've probably heard about aphasia in the news. And, and this is the reason that Avi and I do this work is because most people have no idea what aphasia is, but it's a very common thing. So if you don't mind, I'm going to start with a little presentation. If I can share the screen and, and I'll do a, a quick PowerPoint. And then I'm going to save a few minutes at the end so that Avi um, can chat with you and tell you a bit about himself because Avi himself does have aphasia and he will uh, tell you about his story. <clears throat> okay, so um, can you see my screen? Okay, I'm just going to put it in present mode. Okay. So what is our mission? Why, why do Avi and I do this work? We want to promote a universal awareness and an understanding of what aphasia is. And this will help to provide support for people that have aphasia and their families and caregivers. So as you've seen in the recent news, this is a new slide that I added to my presentation because I've never had anything like this before, that you see that the actor Bruce Willis is diagnosed with aphasia. Now, I'm not gonna go into a diagnosis of what I think is going on with Bruce Willis and whatnot, because I would need to actually sit down with Bruce myself in order to do so. But there was a, a lot of talk within my community of speech language pathologists of does he truly have aphasia? What kind of aphasia does he have? What was it caused by? So in my talk today, you might see why there's a lot of questions as to what's really going on with Bruce Willis. And I honestly, I can't answer those questions for you because I haven't spoken to him myself. But I did want to mention that. <clears throat> so what is aphasia and what causes it? So aphasia is an acquired communication or language disorder. And it impairs a person's ability to speak, to process language, and sometimes to understand others. People with aphasia experience difficulty with reading and writing as well most of the time. But a really important aspect and something that Avi and I speak about a lot is that aphasia does not affect intelligence. So that's where there was like a kind of misconception with this news lately with people calling aphasia a cognitive disorder. And it's a hard line because language is a cognitive function. But when you think about cognition, you think about other aspects of memory, problem solving, reasoning. I mean, I can go on and on what other cognitive skills there are. So we don't really consider aphasia to be a cognitive disorder. It's a language disorder, a disorder of communication. Stroke is the most common cause, but other things like head injuries, brain tumors, and some other neurological conditions can result in aphasia as well. There are some degenerative diseases that impact the brain function, um, like frontotemporal degeneration or cortical basal degeneration. Um, there's also something called primary progressive aphasia, which we're not going to get into today, but it is a slow progression of the, the loss of the ability to communicate. It's different than the kinds of aphasia I'm going to talk about today that are more of a rapid onset, like somebody was speaking yesterday, no problem, had a stroke today, and now they lost the ability to communicate. So it's a little bit different. So with increased obesity rates in our country, along with the rise in heart disease, diabetes, the number of people with aphasia is going to increase. And it's not only going to increase, but it's going to impact younger people. There is a misconception that aphasia affects only elderly people or older people, and that's definitely not the case. So some facts about aphasia. <clears throat> Over 2 million people in America have aphasia. About a third of strokes will result in some form of aphasia. There are over 200,000 new cases each year, and that number is expected to rise as our population ages. Something that's really interesting is that aphasia is more common than cerebral palsy, Parkinson's disease, muscular dystrophy, spinal cord injuries, yet most people have never heard of it until a couple of weeks ago. You can acquire aphasia at any age, <coughs> excuse me, any race, any gender, any nationality. Aphasia commonly co-occurs with other speech disorders, especially if it's caused by a stroke, something called apraxia, which is an issue with motor planning, the signals being sent from the brain to the mouth kind of go awry and the wrong sounds come out. Or there's something called dysarthria. If you've ever met somebody that's had a stroke and they have a um, weakness on one side of their face and their speech sounds kind of slurred or garbled, they may have dysarthria, not aphasia. I mentioned the onset is sudden. 
And many people that have aphasia are prone to depression um, due to feelings of social isolation because they don't feel like they can participate in life the way that they did previously due to their inability or their difficulty with communicating. It's acquired after the age of language acquisition. So aphasia is not something that somebody is born with. Um, so versus a child that's having developmental issues, difficulty developing language, that also would not be considered aphasia. So some common misconceptions that I'd like to point out. Some people think that those with aphasia are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. That's a very common misconception. A lot of people that I've spoken to that have aphasia have said that they've been kind of called out for being drunk or something like that, and that's not the case at all. They've been um, you know, confused with being hard of hearing or that they're just unwilling to try or they don't want to talk or that they have a uh, mental instability or some sort of mental illness or that they're just elderly. Now there's several types of aphasia and for the time that we have today, I won't be able to go into all of them in, in significant detail, but I do think it's important for people to know that there's different types and that not every person with aphasia is the same and there's different ranges and severities. So global aphasia is the most severe form of aphasia. It means that the person has difficulty not only speaking, but understanding language. So somebody with global aphasia would have difficulty saying their name, responding to yes and no questions, following directions, telling you what they want, telling you what they need. These are all things that would be difficult for somebody with global aphasia. And it's typically caused by diffuse brain damage, by a very, very large stroke or traumatic brain injury. Now I do have videos. I don't know if I'm really going to have time to show them. I, maybe I'll just show a little snippet. I have to give her a hand back when I another time. Okay. She was there. Sorry, I, I wasn't sure if you were speaking to me, but I couldn't hear you. Um, so I'm going to share a little snippet of one of these videos, if you don't mind. Just let me know if you can't hear the sound. <laughs> this is a man uh, named Javed who does have a diagnosis of a global aphasia. Do you know that? K-K-K-K-K-K-K. Do you know a song? <laughs> All right. Okay, wait a minute. We'll give you a clean piece of paper here. And you can keep that. <laughs> K-K. A. He wrote J. K-K-K-K-K-K. So for time purposes, I'll have to move on. But as you hear, he's only saying the sounds KK Lele. And those are the only sounds that Javed is able to make. That's not functional communication. He's not able to communicate his wants and needs. Over time, he has improved a little bit. And I believe that he understands more than he used to right after his stroke, for sure. Like he knows that he's looking at a picture of the Beatles and he's, I think he's trying to communicate that with the speech pathologist that he's talking to. But just know that some people with the most severe form of global aphasia would not be acknowledging or recognizing who they're looking at in the picture. They wouldn't be able to verbalize or understand really what you're asking them to do. So that's the most severe form. The next type of aphasia I wanna tell you about is called Broca's aphasia. And this is the type of aphasia that Avi has. Um, and Avi will speak to you in a little bit. And this is caused by damage to an area in the frontal lobe of the brain called Broca's area. And people that have this kind of aphasia have a very non-fluent speech. It sounds very effortful when they're trying to talk. Um, their utterances are typically pretty short of less than four words. Um, their speech may sound kind of halting. For the most part, people with Broca's aphasia can understand maybe 90% of what's being said to them. Um, it does vary according to the individual, but comprehension or understanding language isn't the issue as much as verbalizing and getting the words out. So, I'm not gonna show a video example because you're gonna meet Avi, so I'm gonna skip okay. okay. one and tell you about two other types. The next one's called Wernicke's aphasia, and this is caused by damage posteriorly in the brain to the temporal lobe, an area called Wernicke's area. People that have affluent aphasia, it's hard because their words flow out quite easily, but the content isn't there. So it sounds like nonsense what the person is saying. Sometimes the person can fake it really well and, and kind of say like things like, hey, how are you? Doing good. And, and you can 
almost not know that the person has aphasia. Once they start talking a lot more though, and you notice that there's a, a lack of content in the words that they're saying, then you're gonna realize that something's going on. And the difference with this type of aphasia, of aphasia, the one I just mentioned, is comprehension is an issue. Person's not understanding everything that you're saying to them. They might get bits and pieces, but they're not getting all of it. And the other difficult thing with this type of aphasia is the person's not really aware. Even if you're looking at them with a really quizzical look on your face, like, huh? They're not gonna read into that and say, oh, this person doesn't understand me. And that makes it very difficult for me as a speech language pathologist to work on this kind of aphasia. I can, but it takes a lot more time than some of the other types when the person's not realizing that their communication is not coming through, that we're not able to understand them. So it's nonsensical in a way. So I'm gonna show you a, a little clip of a man named Byron um, and I want you to listen to what his uh, communication sounds like. One second. Let's see if I can get it to play. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. What are you doing today? We stayed with the water over here at the moment and talked with the people up with them over there. They're diving for them at the moment. They'll save in the moment. He'll have water very soon for him. With luck for him. So we're on a cruise and we're about to we get to We will soar it right here and they'll save their hands right there for and, them. And what were we just doing with the iPad? Uh, right at the moment, they don't show a darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> the iPad. Do you see how he didn't understand what she just asked him? She said, what were we just doing with the iPad? He's talking to a speech pathologist and they must have been doing some work using an iPad. And he, his response to her, he knew that she was talking to him, but he didn't know what she said. He couldn't process the language that he was hearing. So that's the difference between a non-fluent aphasia where the person understands pretty much everything, but the words come out kind of choppy versus his speech is flowing. Words are coming out and the thing and the moment and the here and the there, but the content's not there, it's lacking and he's not understanding. So this is a more severe form of aphasia. Okay, and the last one really quick, cause I know I wanna get to some tips of what can you do if you meet somebody with aphasia, what can you do to communicate with them? The last one is called anomia. And this is when a person has a persistent inability to find the word that they're looking for. It's that feeling that we all get, that tip of the tongue kind of feeling, but all the time. So please do not go and diagnose yourself with this type of aphasia because you're all thinking, oh, I can't think of it sometimes because we're all human and that happens, especially with people's names. Does not mean you have aphasia, so don't go and diagnose yourself, please. This is from brain damage. This is somebody that did not have these issues before and now they have this consistent, irritating tip of the tongue feeling all the time where they always get stuck on words and they can't get the words out fluently. <clears throat> This nice picture of the brain for you to see some of these areas that I just mentioned. And I could share this PowerPoint with anybody who's interested if you wanna look at it in more detail. So what are some things that people with aphasia may have difficulty with? Well, taking part in a conversation, talking in a noisy environment, um, understanding or telling a joke, maybe following a TV show or listening to the radio uh, and following maybe something like news, <clears throat> writing a letter or filling out a form, talking on the telephone or using a telephone, saying their own name or saying their family members' names. Some people have problems using numbers and money um, or reading road signs and things of that nature. So friends and family might find it difficult if their loved one has aphasia because it helps to slow down your speech, not talk to the person like they're a child. I'm not saying to slow down and talk like this. You don't have to do that. But the person might need a little more time to process what you're saying to them. Another thing that friends and family like to do is finish people's sentences. Avi and I have been friends for years and sometimes I catch myself doing it, but him and I kind of have an understanding that he said to me, Caitlin, I don't mind when you help me and you finish my sentence. So I only do it because I know that he doesn't mind it, but it's something that it's hard for us to resist the urge, especially if we kind of know what the person's trying to say to not finish their sentence. It's hard for people to adapt the way they communicate or to think about communication. We just talk, we don't think about talking, we just do it. It's hard to keep the conversation going sometimes when you're talking to somebody with aphasia. And sometimes you might not be able to understand what the person is saying. Like that example of Byron that I just showed you. You probably didn't get much meat from what he was saying. You really weren't sure what point he was trying to get across. So how do we communicate with a person who has aphasia? <clears throat> First thing that's really important is to have the person's attention before you're speaking to them. 
not speaking to the back of their head as they're walking away from you, making sure that they're looking at you, you're calling their name, you have eye contact. <clears throat> Minimizing or eliminating background noise, things like uh, TVs, radios, we have sirens on here because we talk a lot to um, first responders and things like that, trying to make it a quieter environment. Keeping your voice at a normal level, raising your voice doesn't make it easier for you to be understood. Keeping your communication simple, but adult, not childlike, as I mentioned before. Confirm that you're communicating successfully by asking the person yes, no questions. That's very helpful as well. Give the person time to speak and resist the urge to finish their sentences as hard as that may be. Communicate with drawings, using gesture, facial expression, writing <clears throat> can be helpful for people with aphasia. It's always good to have a pen and paper handy. Sometimes if they can't get the word out, they might be able to write maybe even just the first letter of a word. Just know that a lot of times people with aphasia, their writing will be very similar to their verbal language. So if they're having word finding issues in speech, they're probably gonna have it in writing as well. And then repeat statements, repeat information when necessary. So we have this little picture of a toolbox. It's just to kind of give you some ideas of things you can do using yes and no questions, using a pen and paper, verifying that the information that you're getting from the person is correct, um, giving them clues or hints or trying to help them to get the words out if they would like you to, using gestures. This is an example of a basic communication board that you can use with somebody, um, especially in like an emergency situation that has aphasia, just with pointing to yes, pointing to no, I'm on the wrong track, I don't understand. So this would be like with somebody that has a more severe form of aphasia that you can use something like this to help you communicate. And then the last thing is that people with aphasia oftentimes will have a card in their wallet that says, I have aphasia, I have difficulty communicating. So Avi carries one around with him. So if he ever were to get pulled over or if he goes to a store and he's trying to talk to somebody or you know trying to order at a restaurant, he could show them his card that says, I have difficulty communicating. I had an injury, a brain injury, a stroke. I have aphasia. My, my intellect is intact. You could see what the card says here. And then there's different like, things that the person can do to help, you know, to communicate better with the individual with aphasia. So what does that leave us with? Now you have aphasia on your radar, you know what it is, you have a, a, a brief explanation of what it is. There is much more, but I think you would all be able to explain to somebody basically what aphasia is. We will not assume that people have diminished mental capacity, right? We at least now know that it's a possibility that maybe they have a communication disorder. We always uh, advise people just to take your time and be patient, use whatever tools are available. And if you suspect somebody has, an, has aphasia, refer to speech pathology. You know, the person should always be evaluated because there is treatment that we can provide as speech language pathologists. For more information, Avi and I made a video. It's on YouTube, so the link is here. If you click on this video, it will show. But if you just type recognize aphasia in YouTube, you'll come to our video, which goes into much more detail. Um, and I demonstrate some of these strategies and things like that with Avi in this video. Okay, so you could check that out. We made that a couple of years ago. Something we're very proud of. And then just the last couple of slides are just resources. If you know somebody who has aphasia or you wanna learn more about aphasia, these are some organizations, some websites, some things that you can look at um, to learn more. And this, yeah, this last one is also some other resources uh, the National Stroke Association, National Aphasia Association. There's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of resources um, for people with aphasia or for people who want to learn more about this topic. So with that being said, I talked as fast as I could, but I do want to give Avi, do we have a few more minutes? So Avi can... can yes, ma'am, you have uh, at least 20 minutes. Great. All right, good. I, I, I could have done more. I didn't know. I thought I, I thought I only had 20 minutes. You can come back and say more. All right. So, so no, Avi, if you want to, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing so you can share. And then no. if anyone has questions, I, I can answer. What about you? You can do it. Uh, you can go long. No, long. no. You talk. Tell your story. And then if people have questions, then I will answer them. All How's right. that sound? Sure. Sure. Th thank you. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, did you see, are you seeing the PowerPoint? Okay. So again, my name is Avi Golden. Um, uh, I am, I have, I attend 15 years ago, basically is a, a, a stroke and aphasia. 
but before I was a paramedic in New York City, uh, five, six, seven years ago. Um, full time at Colum North Shore LIJ and hot time at Columbia Presbyterian, but also there's a lot of stuff. Imanes, Roosevelt, Victor, Hatsala. Uh, I, I am, I was going to Israel for three years. Work uh, studying in Bar Ilan University, but in the evening going to Magen David Dome to ride as well. So it's ambulance as well. Uh, my mother is Israeli, so I understand Hebrew and English. Um, be before, after the stroke, I thank God I understand Hebrew, but I don't speak, read, or write any longer. Uh, so, uh, so I would so. I was going to go to medical school, but first I have a surgery. And in the surgery, I have a stroke resulting in aphasia. So, so for one year, all I can say was Michael. And I have no idea even today who is Michael, like why? I have no idea. And everybody is like, hey, what's up? What's going on? How are you doing? And all I can say is Michael, so it's fine. And then hand me a pieces. So my arm and my leg, my right arm, and my right leg is weak, so it's hard to communicate, but it's it's there. Um, so I spent two months at Columbia Presbyterian and two months at North Shore LIJ. And then two weeks after the stroke, I started to speak with a speech pathology, OT and PT as well. Um, so again, I have broken phages. So I understand everything, but can't get to speaking out. Uh, but every day I am, I was, I am learning with a speech pathology every day and it's getting be better and better, better every year. <laughs> so it's good. Yeah. Um, so again, aphasia is frustrating and fun together. So, it, you know, so I have difficulty with names, numbers, reading, writing, listening. It's very, it's very confusing. So for example, the speech pathology, okay, I'm going to say dog and you repeat dog. I say, okay. So speech pathology, dog, and I say cat. I say, oh, so, sorry, in my head, I meant dog. So I say dog and, and that's fine. Next day later, or five minutes later, it's one or the other. The speech pathology, okay, I'm going to say dog and you repeat dog. So I say, okay. And in my head, I say dog. I also say cat, but I don't realize the difference. The and the speech pathologist says, no, sorry, you meant cat and it's wrong, you meant dog. I say, me? No, no, it's not my fault, it's your fault because I am right. But then like five or 10 minutes later, it's like, oh, wait, I think I'm it. it's my mistake as well. And then next day later or five minutes later, the speech pathologist says, dog and I say, dog. So every day or every week or every second is different. It's very interesting and fun. Yeah, uh, help me. So hearing the first sounds or command to cues, uh, nuance dragon. Um, basically, after the stroke, I don't write any longer because I don't know how to write as well. So thank God for me, again, everybody is different. I have uh, software is speech to talk. So I say, Michael, whatever, and nuance dragon listens and then writes as well. So it's it's good. Uh, um, uh, is pictures and talking to me as well. Um, so Lawrence Nuntari is a speech pathology. And basically she said uh, they are not speaking. So I taught them to say, I love you. Uh, Sweeping my hands three times. So they know that it's there. So it, it, it's good. Um, so I went to the website after the, after the hospital, I went to the, uh, go to home and in the home, I, I, I went to the hospital, I went to the website and I see a lot of stuff with aphasia. So, uh, na um, internet national aphasia center, um, it's right there. So I, is a lot of stuff. Adler aphasia center in Maywood is very close for me. Um, so I go twice a week to Maywood, uh, and it's really cool. And then Mona Green Hill is a speech pathology. So I go also to Maywood to Mona, 
to uh, in Manhattan, and I work with uh, Mona and this a lot of students. Arc also has uh, a fa uh, Arc who has aphasia has Arc aphasia recovery connection. So uh, uh, a lot of people, it's like five, ten, fifteen thousand people, uh, either friend. Uh, people with aphasia or friends, family, whatever, have a good time and uh, video or pictures and talking to uh, people about what's going on, how are you doing it, and stuff like that. Um, Harvey Alter has a stroke, so he he says, you know what, I want to broadcast about international aphasia movement. Um, he, Harvey, unfortunately, he has, he is a the brain, the language is gone, but the music is there. So Harvey says, you know what? I want to broadcast about his music, not the words. So so now he goes around, the, he goes with a lot of people who has aphasia and sing songs together. So it's really very, very good. Um, I went to University of Michigan, six months in dental program. It's very, very good. Uh, so yeah, oops, sorry. Uh, the, the, and then after the stroke, um, um, it, you know, everybody's like, every, every go, everybody goes to the hospital and say, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. What's going on? And all I could do is Michael, 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 Michael. Michael. So yeah, it was really very, very cool. Um, but I like sushi a lot. So Susie, who is my friend, brought me a ton of non sushi and I just gobble up because it's so good. You know, so yeah. And then after the stroke, again, I was writing and it, you can see is very bad, very, very bad. So uh, so now I speak uh, and the nuance dragon listens. So it's good. Uh, and then North Shore LIJ. And then in New York City is help, help, help is 10, 13, 10, 13, 10, 13. So uh, coworkers and friends uh, benefits for me in my name. So EMS, police, uh, firemen, and friends together have, have a good time. Um, so, so I was, I have in my head, in my house is a uh, Bosley paramedic textbook. So I say, you know what, I want to read what aphasia is because before I understand what aphasia is, but I don't really understand and I don't care. But after the stroke, now I don't care. I don't care. So I went to glossary and I see it's four words, difficulty naming object correctly. And that's it. So say, I say, what the, you know, that's crazy. It's very small. So thank God I email and I call a lot and I say, it's okay to speak with EMS or police or firemen or hospitals uh, with a speech fellow together talking about aphasia. And a lot of people says, yes, come and speak about aphasia. Um, uh, and also I love, uh, for me, a uh, zoo, like Bronx Zoo, because it's so fun. So uh, I, I went with a lot of friends in my ha ha car and the, the ambulance is Columbia. Pres I have, I was working as a paramedic in Columbia Presbyterian to say, ooh, Mike, Michael, stop. Mike and Uncle Ambient, stop. So somebody stop and I held up. And Mike and Danny, a long time ago, was working with me. So they say, hey, uh, I say, Mike and Mike, Mike, hello. And I, Mike and Danny's like, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. What's going on? I say, Michael, 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 because it's, you know, it's really fun. Uh, so National Aphasia Center is called Aphasia Training Awareness. So Elaine Ganser is president, but also is a speech pathology. And Stephen Sabalik speak about aphasia with EMS or hospitals, and one or two people who has aphasia speak about their story. So for example, Smith USA or New Jersey City Center, but also, thank God I, I fly or I drive a lot. And I spoke again with a speech fellow together working with EMS or police or uh, in Israel, Magen David Adom paramedic as well, but also doctor nurses, PAs as well, uh, in USA and Israel as well, and other uh, 
country as well. Um, and then I was going to go to medical school and then I have a stroke. So I went to the hospital, uh, the, to the medical school and I say, is okay to speak with the medical school about, res uh, about aphasia? And he said, yes, uh, the guy. So um, Gail Weissman is a speech pathology in post. So he spoke, she spoke about aphasia and then Dr. Peter, sorry, long name, sorry. Um, before he was a, a pediatric uh, MD and then he has a stroke. So he spoke about his story. So it's very, very, very cool. Um, and then also a lot of people who has aphasia speak about their story with the uh, EM, a police or sorry, OT and PT and speech pathology students. Uh, so they understand more than before. So it's very, very, very cool. And then uh, uh, last, uh, many years ago, I went to LA and I spoke with, uh, uh, again, long name, Dr. Peter Fofofa is a neuro. So he spoke with me about aphasia uh, with radio or TV. So it was very, very cool. And then uh, twice I go to Asha. Asha is a speech pathology student. So I spoke again also with uh, the student students. So yeah. And then um, last week or two weeks ago, I spoke with uh, doctors, three different speech pathology um, about Colorado House of Representatives. So it was uh, very, very cool. Um, and then also I go to hospital to visit patients who have stroke. Uh, and then um, Carly, Mac Carly McIntyre, I think so, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, she, he was an actor and then he has a stroke. So he said, you know what, I want to broadcast about uh, aphasia of the movie. So now he goes around the world and speak about his story. And then Chappelle Chase, uh, he was a, he is, he, he, he is aphasia. But before he's a director and he was speaking with Hillary Clinton. It was very, very cool. And then things I like to do a lot because it's fun, like skydiving or scuba diving or sky, uh, skydiving or, uh, you know, a lot of stuff to do with a lot of people who, have dis who has also uh, people with a they, people with a disability. So it's really very, very cool. Um, and then um, I, so I, the, par the, pa the paramedic a long time ago was uh, passed, is it Caesar, whatever. So I really want to do it again. So I was writing it and passed. So uh, four years after the stroke, Avi was Avi is working volunteer, but working today. So it's very 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 cool. So um, also you can go whatever uh, is Journal of EMS and speak and listen and write and understand what aphasia is. So it's really cool. So please call me or email me or call me or whatever. And that's it. So any questions, comments, concerns? And while we're entertaining questions, uh, could you please put your email into the chat so we can get a hold of you? And again, we'll make sure that everyone has access to the both presentations um, so we can follow up with all of this information. But if you could put your email in the chat, that would be great. Absolutely. And thank you very any much. Questions? Do we have any questions for this amazing team? I think you all have raised seriously raised awareness here and given us a lot of information. You are an amazing, engaging, very effective team. So thank you so much for coming to New Mexico. And health councils, I have a feeling um, that they might be open to speaking to your communities. I don't want to speak for them. Oh, yes. Caitlin is nodding her head. Yeah. So if, uh, if we I'd can get the to. word out through New Mexico, that would be terrific. I know we have a lot to learn still. We really appreciate those quick tips. 
but uh, there's much more to learn we can see. And I told both of our speakers that this is the beginning of a conversation about aphasia. We just really need to know more. I'll stop talking if anybody has any questions for our team. Yeah, it was a lot more complicated than I thought. Just so many different <laughs> varieties. I, I had no idea. I didn't really know what it was, just something about language. But, um, and I can see how much I don't know. There's, if you only gave a short summary, um, then um, there's a lot more to know out there. And, and it was especially helpful seeing um, tips for how to communicate with someone who was struggling with communication. Thank you. And I just want you to know, I did put the link to our YouTube video in the chat. So please feel free to check it out. And my email's there as well. If anybody has questions or you're interested in having us come to speak, anybody i don't know we're just trying to get the word out so we are happy to do so um so i just want to say we really appreciate you having us here today uh we so appreciate you coming thank you so much thank you take care okay great thank you thank you all too for uh joining us in this presentation and we will again we'll make sure that all of you have access to all this information that's presented today and the links to much more information. I was really struck, I must say, by the necessity to differentiate, not jump to the assumption, as you were saying, that someone might uh, be under an influence of something uh, chemical, rather than really having a, a, a language disability. So something we all need to be much more alert to, I think. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. We have a and, couple of, um, yes. I just wanted to ask Caitlin, I know Avi said he has difficulty with reading and there are comments in the chat, which he may not be able to read. We just want to be sure that, that those messages get to him. Yes. yes I'll, I'll make sure he does. He's him and I do text. Um, so his reading is, okay. it improves yeah. all the time. So I think he's, he's good with this kind of information. Um, but right. I will make sure to pass along because I think he might have signed off already. <laughs> I think yeah, he well, yes, run, just, just make sure that he sees all these many thank I yous will. and kudos to a uh, wonderful job of presenting. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to step out. Let me know if you need okay. anything. You have my email and thank you for okay. having us. We will be in touch. Thank you. Right. Take care. Okay. Bye. And then uh, I will just share this screen really quickly if I can find it again uh, with some upcoming announcements for us. Come on. So here are some uh, upcoming events that are happening soon. So Monday, we've got uh, our CDC training is going to be launching our community building workshops. So what is community building? What's the framework that we're going to be working under? Uh, let's get started on community building. So everyone is welcome to that. The links are on our website. Similarly, Wednesday, you are all invited to the board meeting where we will go over what's been happening across the state with the Alliance, open to everyone. And then Friday, another Health Council talk. Stacey Burlinson, Burlinson is going to tell us about women in leadership. These are women who, have, who are incarcerated or have left incarceration and are now becoming community leaders, a very interesting program. And Christopher Gomez will, from Western Sky Community Care, it's going to give us uh, some information on uh, Western Sky, but also how we can make sure that everybody gets re-enrolled in Medicaid. It's been pretty confusing lately with the end of the Medicaid extension under COVID. And Chris is going to tell us, uh, get us up to speed on that and also offer the services of Western Sky, which are available no matter which insurance company you eventually end up with. So all those links are on our website. Uh, nmhealthcouncils.org. So we hope to see you there. Stay in touch. Do we have any other uh, last minute announcements or comments, questions? Thanks everybody for coming. Yeah. Okay, great. We will see you next time at our next venture. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.